In this brief tutorial, I'll show you how to create a basic particle system to mimic dust particles that are floating through the air. Uh, we're going to kind of spice it up and make it look a little bit sci-fi-ish and give it some glowing effects. Uh, but other than that, it's a very simple process and it's got only a few steps. This is what it'll look like uh, inside of the room once we've created this system. So all the particles behave in a little bit of a different way. They all move in a little bit of a different way. And they kind of float downwards. And as you get close to them, they glow. And as you get farther away, then they become like little pin dots. So it's a pretty neat effect. It looks pretty good, but it's extremely simple, which always makes it a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable to uh, create it on the fly. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're going to hit File, New, make a subtractive level. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the cube and build 1000, 2000, and 1000 for the X, Y, and Z coordinates. And then I'm going to grab a hold of my brush. And we're going to hit CG Subtract. And that'll build our room that we're going to be using. I'm then going to go to the content browser and select a tile material that I can apply to the surface just to kind of give it some texture and make it look uh, a little bit more believable. So once we have our texture in sight, we're going to right click and uh, select all the surfaces and then highlight that, that material and right click and apply it. And then change the alignment to planar. And once that's done, we'll go ahead and uh, create a light in the scene and you can do this by holding the L key and left clicking somewhere uh, within the level. And you can just adjust the positions using the, uh, the move tool. So this position looks pretty good. Uh, it's given some good shadows in the corners, and I want that contrast. So here what we're going to do is uh, go into the dust particles, and I'm going to show you the material I have. I'm not going to really go over how to create it, but uh, it'll be available uh, upon purchase. So I just created it using uh, uh, some panner nodes and stuff like that and a couple of different textures that I've painted. And we're going to be using that for the particle system. So... Next, what we need to do is just go ahead and uh, start chopping away at the particle system. We're going to right click and we're going to say new particle system. And it'll bring up the dialog box to, you know, give it, put it inside of a group and, and name it. So we're inside of the uh, particle editor. And we're going to select that material in the generic browser. And then go to the required tab. Scroll down and click the little, green, the little green arrow. And you might see that it's not showing up right now. It's because you have to refresh the scene. So once we refresh it, then uh, you can see it emitting. So first, we're going to just go down the line. In spawn, we're going to bring the constant up, which will cause more to spawn. Uh, in lifetime, you can tweak these however you want. We're going to give uh, max about 15 and min about 4. And... That should give some good variant, and it'll uh, kind of bleed off, and it'll allow the particles to kind of float around in space for a pretty long amount of time. The initial size, we want this to be extremely small, so we're going to use about 3 for the max and about 1 for the minimum. Even though it is going to look really, really funky at first, it'll, uh, it'll look right later on. So that's looking pretty good but the speed is just way off. So now in the initial velocity, uh, we're going to tweak this so that all the numbers are roughly right around zero because we want everything to, to kind of hug close to, that, to absolute zero. This way it's just very, very subtle changes in direction and motion that the particles will have. So just going to kind of tweak it and see how it looks and if any changes need to be made, then we can make those. As you can see, it's it's gently falling down below the grid, and this is the effect that I want. I want it to kind of slowly drift downwards. But as you can see, it's kind of flat. 
So we need to uh, change the Y uh, drastically. We need to really, really pump that up on both uh, the max and the min. And once we've done that, we've got a pretty good looking uh, basic particle system here that's already taken on a lot of the uh, attributes that we need. Last thing that we need to do is just right click and add a location, initial a location. And what this will basically do is create a blocking volume where we can spawn the particles within a certain volume that we set, you know, using the X, Y, and Z coordinates. So I'm going to give it about 200 for the max and negative 200 for the minimum. And right off the bat, we can uh, start to see that once all those are set, let me go ahead and turn off the grid here so that we can kind of get a better look at this. You can see that they're free floating in space and it looks like uh, basic particles. They're kind of floating around like little dust particles. And you can go a lot further with this. Uh, we'll do a couple tweaks onto it, but for the most part, I mean, it's, it's a really, really simple process. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click and drag that out into the scene. And you want to make sure that you are in real time. If you're not in real time, you'll, you won't be able to see the particles reacting. So I'm going to kind of drag that up. As you can see, it's, it's also not really covering a lot of space. So we need to change that by changing our blocking volume to be larger. So instead of something like 200, we can have something in the max like 500. And in the minimum, we can have like negative 500. Um, but I think that 200 will be all right right now. So we're just kind of looking around and making sure everything looks good. I'm going to duplicate a couple and pull them over. That way it kind of fills up that space. So it's looking pretty good. Um, it is actually a little bit uh, a little bit clumped together. It's not spread out as much as I would like it to be. It's not even covering the back. So I might go ahead and change the uh, the back to a negative 500 just to kind of cover up those uh, those vacant areas. So we'll go back to initial location and in the minimum we will crank it to negative 500 in the X, Y, and Z axes. So that should have done it and yeah it's looking pretty good. So we'll go ahead and kill that and we will kill that as well. And now we're just going to do uh, some very, very simple touch-ups to this. As you can see, the particles are all free-floating. It's looking pretty good. So we're going to open up the world properties, and we're going to just uh, tweak the bloom scale. We want to pump this up quite a bit to like 10. And now you can see that there's a glow that's um, coming off of the particles that are closer to you. That's looking pretty good. Uh, we might need to bring the uh, threshold down a bit, so maybe like 0.5. There we go. All right, so that's that's looking pretty good. Uh, I want to crank it up a little bit, but it's completely up to you. I also want to give this room a kind of like a color tweak. So let's do some color correction, and I've already got some uh, presets here that I've used. So for the scene midtones, it's going to be 1.1 in the X, and I believe 1.4 one and then in the scene shadows it's going to be zero uh, negative point one and point two or no point one yeah okay so then it gives us a pretty nice green glow to the scene and I mean, that's pretty much the the end effect it's very very simple very 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 simple uh, but I hope that you enjoyed it, and uh, it creates a really, really nice effect and really brings a whole new feel to uh, an environment that you're playing in or that you're uh, shooting for a cinematic scene. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I will see you later.